Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Teach a Gal to Fish, the Art of Mentoring. Please take your seats and give a round of applause for exclusive Black Status Presenter Level 1 and Wall of Influence Achiever, Katie Thompson. So my name is Katie Thompson, Black Level 1 Status Presenter, Wall of Influence Earner. Um, I'm just going to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. I am a mom of three kids. Those are my kids on the left. And then that's us in Jamaica. And then that was just us on our vacation in California. I was born and raised in Vermont to some dairy farmers. And I was probably a little mischievous child. And I'm telling you this because it kind of gives you a guide to where I became to who I am. I worked really hard on the farm. I milked cows, threw bales. This is not my typical daily outfit. I struggled through school. I am dyslexic. I have three sisters who I love dearly, but we're all extremely different. I always knew that my parents were proud of me. I always knew that they loved me. But it was never enough for me. I never felt like I made them proud. No matter what I did, I always felt like it wasn't enough. Again, I was mischievous, so I was always tipping the line, tiptoeing the line. So I kind of struggled through my high school years. I lost a couple friends. They died in car accidents or they got sick. Um, I ended up having my first daughter at 19, who is in the audience today. And she probably changed the path of my life forever. She doesn't know that because she's never heard me say that. I went on to get married to somebody who was at the time my best friend. And we later had two more two kids. Whitney, who's in the wheelchair, and her brother Hayden. I got married because I was pregnant. I had called me wedding off three times. He's a great guy. He was great to my daughter. And I wanted to do the right thing by giving her a family. Because that's how I was raised. Divorce just didn't happen in my family. And I didn't want to be a single mom. He was great with her. He comes from a great family. They owned a business. He had a huge future planned. The problem was is that I wasn't completely 100% in love with him. So we got married, like I said, and things were good, but it was something inside me that wasn't happy. No matter what things I had or what he could provide for me or what we had planned for the future, it was never enough. So... Like I said, we had Whitney. She was born on Christmas Day, so I call her my little Christmas angel. And as she started to develop, I started to realize that she wasn't completely like Haley was when she was born. So things were hard. We were always in and out of the doctor's offices. And... they started to realize that she had a rare disease. Really no name for it at the time because she was still so young. Hayden was born. He, well, there was like two years in between them. Again, I'm dyslexic. I'm not well, don't do well with math, so I can't narrow the, the months down right now for you. But he was born. They were very close. She never walked until she was 22 months old. We were in and out of physical therapy appointments and everything trying to get her to where she was quote-unquote, normal. I just thought it was developmental delays. 
and it wasn't. So here I am, I'm in this marriage, not happy. Things aren't great with the in-laws. Things aren't great with us. He was, again, he's a great guy. We still get along to this day. We still text, we, we, get, we get along great. I don't want you to think that he's a bad guy because he's not. But I just, I wasn't happy. And we all know that you have to have that. You have to be happy to be a good mom. You have to be happy to do anything in life. And if you're not happy, you're not going to be good at anything that you do. So, as time went on, Hayden was 18 months old. We, we got a divorce. No, sorry, he was three years old. Got a divorce. And Whitney started to get worse over time. She was four years old when I realized we were walking outside one night and she just froze. Like, she literally was like, Mom, you're going to carry me, right? And I was like, come on, like, let's go. And she's like, no, I can't see. I could, and I went, oh, my gosh, for two years this kid has never gotten out of bed on her own. And we lived in a, a single, we lived in a double wide at the time, and it was so everything was on one story. I'm like, why won't this kid get out of bed in the morning like any other kid, and, you know, come running into the kitchen? Because she couldn't see. She was born with two of the most rare neurological diseases that you could have and pair them together. One of them is Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease, and one of them is retinitis pigmentosa. Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease basically is debilitating her as she grows. Retinitis pigmentosa is an eye disease that will take her eyesight away eventually. So that was devastating to me. I was going to all the doctor's appointments by myself because Heath was always working. Um, it was really hard. I was not a happy person. I always thought I was a good mom, but I knew that I wasn't the mom that I could be. I was living paycheck to paycheck. I was watching daycare kids. I was working part-time as a hairdresser, three or four days of work. I mean, I worked all the time, but it wasn't enough to give me the security of my unknown future for what was about to embark on Whitney's life. I have no idea what the future is going to bring today. And we got back together, just to kind of fast forward a little bit. We got back together after five years. I sat on my butt for five years, dabbled a little bit into network marketing, had zero success. And we ended up getting back together because I was scared to death that Whitney had gotten worse over these five years. It was like four and a half. And I thought, I have to take him back because I cannot afford to raise these kids on my own. And that is an awful feeling. So we got back together. And I wanted to t prove to myself and to the kids that I could do this, try this for them. So that way they knew that mom and dad tried, we did everything that we could. That's when I found Unique. In November of 13, I literally sat the kids down and I told them, give me three months to build this business. They didn't know that I even signed up to sell Unique because I did it in the playroom, never told anybody. Signed up to sell Unique, sat the kids down. I said, give me three months to build this business. And my son said, Mom, if you start to make $20,000 a month, will you buy me a razor? Absolutely. Not thinking that it would ever happen because nothing else had ever gone right in my life, but this was just one more shot. So I started posting on Facebook, started posting on Facebook, started to get some really good interaction with people, was really networking on Facebook. I started signing up people left and right. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really gonna take us somewhere. I thought in my head, if I can make this work, my relationship will work. If I can save our family by earning extra money, this will work. I'm here to tell you that no matter how much money you make, if you're not happy, it's not gonna work. It didn't work for me. You have got to find what makes you happy. 
and then you're going to be successful. We struggled for months. We struggled until May of that year. My first goal when I started Unique was to put an in-ground pool in. So we started digging for the pool Memorial Day weekend of May of 14, 2014. And at that point, some things had happened between us. And I just said, I'm done. I'd hit black status three months into my business, 109 days. I worked nonstop. I stopped doing laundry. The kids learned to cook and clean. And if they wanted, honestly, I went to TJ Maxx every single week and bought socks for the kids. I have a basket full of socks that's this tall, full of mismatched socks. Well, not anymore because we have folded them, but I didn't do, I made sacrifices in this, for this business to work. I gave up a relationship because it wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't making me happy. It wasn't making my kids happy because they were on edge. And I knew that we were better apart. I knew that we could be better parents separately. So I had to do that for myself in order to move on and grow. I tell you this because it's kind of how I became a mentor in my business and how I mentor my team and how I am the way I am with my team. Because I've been through I have not had it easy. I've always taken the harder road, even though the, the easier road is right in front of me. I was that person that took every winding road there was. Like I said, my first goal was to put a pool in so when they could do physical therapy. And I did that all by myself. I paid for that entire pool by myself with Unique. So that kind of gave me the fire to be able to do anything that I wanted to do in this business. So I just kept going. <laughs> so that's a little bit about me. Just wanted to kind of fill you in on how I became who I am in this business. I've had people tell me that sometimes you're too hard, you're too cold, we're afraid of you. <laughs> I'm not even afraid of. I just tell you how it is. And I, I, I just beat around the bush. Mentoring is a brain to pick, an ear to listen, and a push in the right direction. I love this saying. A mentorship refers to a personal development relationship that gives purposeful conversation to reflect upon an experience and to make informed decisions to act upon ideas generated. A mentor should inspire you, they should motivate you, and they should challenge you. If they don't, find a new mentor. Find somebody that inspires you. Find somebody that you can connect with, that you can relate to. Because if you're not connecting with somebody, it's not going to go anywhere. They're not going to push you in the direction that you need to go in. Find somebody that motivates you, that's going to push you to your limits. Your job as a mentor is to manage the relationship. You encourage, nurture, teach, we're going to spend some time here. Offer mutual respect and respond to the needs of the mentee, the person you're mentoring. The most important part of mentoring somebody is remembering that this is not about you. This is about them. This is about helping them grow. Managing the relationship is crucial because you don't want to be taken advantage of. After I spoke in my first class on Thursday, somebody asked me, how do you know if somebody's wasting your time? You give them a schedule of what they're supposed to go do after your talks. If they aren't doing what you're telling and asking them to do, to grow their business, to grow their personal development, then you need to be honest with them and tell them that. 
that you need to take a step back because they're not, your time is just as valuable as theirs. And you can be their friend, but when you're in business mode, this is about business. That's up to you to manage how you want that relationship to run. Somebody had asked me when I was walking out of the room, how do you know if they're wasting your time? And I said, well, if it's a business relationship, you're going to know because you're going to go in your back office. If they're not sponsoring and they were supposed to sponsor somebody, or if they aren't selling product, there's no PRS, then they're not taking your relationship seriously. They're not truly wanting to be mentored. They're wanting to be your friend, which that is fine. But you have to call those shots. If you are willing to grow, it's your job to help them grow because you're not going to grow unless you're helping other people in your organizations grow. Does that make sense? Encourage them. Tell them that you believe in them. It sounds so weird when you start telling people that you believe in them, whether you, do, whether you know them or not. Giving somebody the belief that they can do this is huge. If you see what they're doing, if they're sponsoring somebody and you just send them a message, send them a private message or a voice message on your cell phone and just say, hey, congratulations, I saw that you sponsored two people this month. Or hey, you're kicking it in PRS. That is so encouraging to somebody who is just starting out or who is trying to grow their business that you as their leader are noticing them. I met some people last night, they're like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that you messaged me. And I'm like, why? You were doing so awesome. Because I want them to know that if they want to, they can come to me. Those little tiny messages mean the world to people. More than you can, you, you can send them 10,000 purses. It's not going to mean anything to them. Those little tiny gestures that come from the heart mean more to them than anything. Tell them that you love them because you will get to know them as they grow and you're going to learn to love them just like you love your family. It was a little weird in the beginning when I first was told, you know, that tell your girls that you love them. Tell them that you believe in them. But then when it started happening to me, I was like, oh my gosh, these people care about me. I'm not just the number in their organization. They care about me. Teaching somebody how to fish, which is the title of this presentation. And I, I think it's, it's, at first I thought it was kind of quirky, but I thought, you know what, I like it. So teaching somebody how to fish. I have, I think, 72,500 people on my team. I cannot possibly teach every single person on my team what I do. I have a group for that. When I sign up a new presenter, it's my job as their leader to show them where to find information. We have files. I tell them, I post daily in my group, I have tips and tricks that I did to get to where I am today. Everything that I've done is in the files. It is your job to go read those files. I'll tell you everything that I did, but I will not do the work for you. And you need to get that commitment from them. If you get messages constantly, I mean, I, at one point, was getting messages, how much is mascara? How much is this? No, do not answer those messages. Teach them where to find the answers from the get-go, because if you are doing the work for them, what do you think is going to happen when they sign up their team? Who do you think they're going to tell the message? Well, just ask my sponsor because she tells me I don't have to do the work. Self-education is huge to be successful. You have to teach your girls to be self-motivating, self-teaching. There's so many ways that we can teach them. We can do Facebook Lives. We can do webinars. We can do, what's the new thing that everybody's doing? What is it? Zoom. I've done one, I think, with Kara Newton. Um, I'm not technology savvy. I 
am a private message person. That's how I still would rather talk to my people or on the phone or voice message. But there's so many ways to teach them. Don't get caught up in doing everything for your team. Because if you do, you're going to drown yourself. You're not going to be able to keep up. You're going to get burnt out, and you're going to be like, it's, this is just way too much for me to do. I've been there. In the beginning, I didn't know it. Like I said, I went black status in 109 days. I had no clue what I was doing. I was just building my business as fast as I could. I wasn't a leader. I didn't come into here with experience. I didn't come in here with a team. I taught myself what to do. I learned from my mentors, my leaders, on what to do. I wasn't born a black status leader. And I didn't stop working when I hit black status. I kept going because I had that hunger to find more women to help. That's what you need to constantly be teaching your people. Funny little story. Yesterday, Kyle and I were sitting in a class, and I kind of chuckled because I go, you were listening to my class. He's in my convention group. And he turns around and he looks at me and he looks and I go, well, what were you talking about? He goes, nothing, I just found my answer. And I go, well, what, what was the question? And I saw that he had my, I had a meet and greet last night, he had that open. He goes, well, I just wanted to know what time it was, but I just found it in your group. And I go, you were listening to my class. <laughs> so that's what I mean by you don't always, I mean, I would have answered him if you'd asked, but that's the type of questions that I can literally post in a group and then 20 minutes later, get a question, like if, if corporates, you know, post something and then I copy and post it in my group, I'll get an influx of messages from girls. I don't have to answer those questions because I know if I don't answer them, they know if they really want that answer, they can just go to the group and find it. It's not rude. It's not mean. It's teaching them to be independent because you're teaching them to be a leader. At first, it was really hard for me not to be that mama bear and do everything for them. But I couldn't imagine doing everything for everybody. I have extremely independent leaders because I, here's, here's the stuff, go work. You do it. You do the work. Here's all the information. They were hungry enough to want that as much as I did. My girls only come to me if they need help, if they, have, if they want advice on how to work with their teams, if there's something going on in their teams. Another thing that you really, really want to be cautious of when you're working with girls, working with your teams, is to stay away from drama. This is a huge lesson. Everybody has it. Not everybody gets along. And not everybody is meant to work together. Feelings are going to get hurt. You know, I make a joke and say, oh, I've got, you know, 72,000 people on my team. Maybe 69,000 of them hate me. It's not going to stop me from doing what I do. I'm okay with my type of leadership. If somebody else isn't, that's their problem. That's not my problem. That's a hard thing to, to swallow when you're comparing yourself to everybody else. Because we have some amazing leaders. You have to be okay with what you're doing, and you have to encourage your girls and your leaders to be okay with what they're doing. Because that's huge. That goes back to the encouraging part and the nurturing part, the letting them know what they're doing is working. If it's not working, that's where you need to be honest with them. If you have girls, this is one of the biggest lessons that come to you, this girl's doing this, and that girl's doing that, and I don't like that she's doing this. Don't engage in it. It's not income producing. It's not going to help your business grow, and it's not going to help theirs. I'm not saying that you can't listen. If it's really causing, you can try to fix the issues. But most of the time, you're not going to be able to. Trust. This goes back to what I was talking about with staying out of the drama part. 
We have a block button on Facebook for a reason. Use it. I know it seems harsh, but it's not. I myself have a list two miles long. Most of them are creepers from over the water, but <laughs> I think we all have those. <laughs> but use the block button. Pay attention to your business and your team. And that's what you have to instill in your girls. I don't know how many times I'll wake up and get messages and, oh my gosh, did you see that this presenter is doing that and that presenter is doing this? No, I didn't because I don't go into groups. I mind my own business. And that is crucial, you guys. Like, I, I can't even, and you ask my girls, if you are sitting next to anybody on my team, they'll be like, she hates groups. I will go in, in my elite group and I will lay the hammer down when there starts to be drama because I, it, it's not income producing. It will rip your team apart. If you have somebody that you can't mentor, you're not meant to mentor every single person on your team. You're not. You're just not. I'm not. I'm sure there's some that hate my style of leading. I'm okay with that. When something happens on your team, you address it and you move on. If it happens to be with two leaders that don't get along, and this has happened multiple times in my downline, and other sidelines. You just take both people on as your own and you work with their teams. But don't ever go back to the other person and say what this person said because that looks horrible on you as the leader. Do you all agree with that? Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's so... I wouldn't even think that I would have to stand here and say that, but I've seen it happen so many times. You have to keep that to yourself. And you have to also hear them both out, listen, and then move on. Tell them that it's never up for discussion again, and that that's the end of the, the story. That's it. Cut it out. Regular contact and conversation. This goes back to you guys always managing the relationship. You set the schedule. You have an agreed upon time when you're going to talk each week or if it's every other week, once a month. Whatever you guys decide, you set that schedule and you stick to it. If the mentee, person you're mentoring, is never available, she's not clicking on the Zoom links, or she's not calling you at the t scheduled time, she's always rescheduling, you're going to know that they're not as involved as they once said that they were. Be honest with them. Ask them. Where are you at? What do you want out of this? If it's a friendship, if it's business, how do you want to grow? Believe in the process. You have to believe in the process to be able to grow. You have to know that the person coming to you knows that you can help them. I've gotten so many calls. Can I talk to you? You also have to be, this is also extremely important. If you are in a bad mood, I mean, we're all moms, most of you are married, I'm sure. We all have bad days. We all have times where we don't want to deal with things. We don't want to even talk to people. That's okay. We're all human. Set your own schedule of when you can, you can talk. I've had people message me that they're, you know, they're in a tizzy or they have to talk right now. If I'm in a bad mood, am I going to call that person right then? Just to say that I, I took care of it? You have to be in the right mind frame to get your point across, to talk them out of whatever issues that they're dealing with. You are not a therapist. You're their mentor. That's huge. I did make that mistake once where I was, I was, I was so afraid of losing the girl that I was like, call me right now, but I really wasn't in the right mindset to her. I wasn't listening to what she was actually saying. 
And I caught myself, and I was like, oh my gosh, snap out of it, because this is about her. This isn't about you. I didn't, wasn't ready to take on what she wanted to talk about. So make sure that your mindset is right, because if it's not, they're going to know. And they're going to know that you really don't care about them, but you care about yourself. Desire to build a relationship. Be genuine. Ask them about their families. Have a notebook. When you start working with a new presenter, somebody who you're trying to help grow their business personally, professionally, and in, in business, keep a journal of everybody that you're talking with and what their goals are. Show them that you really, really want them to grow, that you really care about them as people, their family. Ask them. You know, even if it's not a scheduled session, you know, shoot them a message. Ask them how little Susie's doing. Because it just shows them that you actually care about nurturing that relationship. Open to growth. This one's huge as well. If I was the same person that I was four years ago, if you went back and looked at my Facebook four years ago, I was the most miserable, negative person ever. I'm sometimes embarrassed when, you're, when it comes up in your, your memories of like things that I would say or how negative that I was. If I wasn't open to growth and I didn't listen to things that my sponsor, my mentors had told me that I had to do to grow this business, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have girls looking up to me where I am today. I'm nobody special. I was open to growth. I was opening to changing who I was. Nobody would have ever bought mascara from me five years ago because I wasn't beautiful on the inside and I certainly wasn't beautiful on the outside because I was always cranky, because I wasn't happy with myself. When you're mentoring somebody, you're going to know whether they're really open to growth or not. Because if they're not, you're going to be able to tell by looking in their back office. Now, you're here, I'm assuming, to build a business. So I'm assuming that people that you're going to be mentoring are going to be growing their business. Like I said before, if you are helping them set a schedule, set goals, showing them how to get from A to B, or from pink to blue, blue to green, and they're not doing the work, they're not open to growing. If you tell them, go read this book, and they don't, but they come back two months later and say, oh, I want to hit black status, or I want to hit purple status, but they're doing nothing to get there, they're not open to growth. It's nothing against you. It's, that's them. It's nothing that you are doing wrong. One thing that you guys have to remember, and I have to remind myself that sometimes, and I have, I'm honest with myself, I can't go and sponsor 15 people a month because I personally can't take that on. I can only help a certain amount of people a month. If your girls aren't doing what you're talking about in your sessions, then they're not open to growth. If they're not doing personal development, they don't want to change. You have to change in order to grow. There's no way around it. Whether it's changing what you do every single day to wa not watching TV at night. I haven't watched TV in like 10 years. Like, no kidding. I really haven't. CMT because Luke Bryan's on every now and then, but that's it. I make priorities. <laughs> but that's all I do. I have made sacrifices. Those are changes that I made to be able to grow my business and come out of the funk that I was in. If it's to, from going out at night, changing who they are, give them ideas of what, what's not working in their life. What are you, what's not working for you? And then talk them into how they can change that. Principles of mentoring. Mentoring is about learning and not teaching. 
the mentee is feeling empowered and ready to take responsibility of her actions. Learning and not teaching. You are going to be learning just as much as you are teaching them how to grow their business. You're going to be learning about yourself, whether you think so or not when you start this process. Sometimes when I get off the phone with a girl, I'm going to be like, I can't believe I just said that to her. I'm proud of myself. Because you see yourself growing. And just things that you've read or you've listened to with your own personal development because you're still growing, you can't help somebody if you're not personally growing. I tend to think of teaching, if you're telling your girls what to do in a very corporate manner, and it's not going to grow them, they're going to know that. Do you guys understand what I mean by that? Instead of leading them, you're telling them what to do. You want to lead them. You don't want to tell them what to do. You're going to give them ideas. That's very crucial in this business because I've seen people push their team so hard sometimes that the girls will just quit underneath them. And half of the time it's because the upline wants to promote. I had a personally sponsored, she's now a really great black status presenter up in Canada. She asked me once, she's very independent, very rarely comes to me. She asked me if I thought her second or her fourth green was I think $1,800 away at the time. She had two days. And I like this story because it, it held true to everything that I said, and it made sense. And I think it's, it's helped her to really understand how this business works. Again, she's a very smart business woman to begin with, but she said, do you think it's really worth me pushing them? I know if I push them, they'll do it, and I'll hit black status. I don't care about statuses. My status, I'm proud of my status, but I'm more proud of how many women's lives I've helped change from the opportunity that's been created. The money is awesome, the status is great, but it's not who I am. I can't just stop because I've, I've hit black status level one. I still want to keep growing. So anyway, so she had said, I know I can really, really push these girls. And I'm like, is a status more important to you or is your, is your foundation, is your paycheck? I said, because quite honestly, you're going to lose a little bit of money if you go black. And I had some other black status presenters. There wasn't very many of us at the time. And I had a couple people say to me, are you crazy? You want her to go black status. And I go, mm, I don't think so, because if they push this team so hard, they're not going to come back next month. If she just finishes as purple, all of these people are going to stay in her circle She's going to have a bigger paycheck, and that girl, who is a very high blue status presenter, is going to go green next month, probably halfway through the month, because that momentum is still going to be there. I said, so you do what you want to do. This is my suggestion. If it was me, again, being a mom of three kids, single, I would have wanted the steady paycheck over a status. Of course... I really, really, really wanted to have that black status presenter, you know, promote underneath me because that made me look good, right? But I had to think about her and her team and where they would be the following month. I do believe that they hit black status on like the 20th of the month or in the 20s. It wasn't at the end. I mean, they literally hit because they kept that momentum going. If she hadn't, if she had pushed those girls... I really don't think that they'd have come back. And I've told a couple of other teams that you have to think about helping these girls and guide them in the right direction. Don't push somebody to the brink to that they've worked so hard that they're going to quit. To get yourself ahead, it will kill you in the end. It will hurt your business. I promise you that. 
you're going to have to start all over building. Be honest from the start. When you're mentoring somebody, make sure that when you get off the phone, when you get off your Zoom sessions, that they are feeling that they have the tools, that they have the steps, and the encouragement to go do what you guys have talked about doing to build their business. Make sure that they're ready. Provide direction to achieve goals and growth. That's easy, right? If you're trying to get them to a new status, pink status, $2,000 in PRS, and they have to recruit one person and have 125 in PRS, one qualified presenter. The steps to building them is very simple. It's in the back office. It's in our chart. Teach them that chart. Guide them in the direction that they need to go to grow. Set goals. When you're setting goals, make sure that they're, they're goals that they can, that they set, not something that you've set. Make sure that they're goals that they have set. But also make sure that they understand that they don't want to set the easy goals for themselves. They want to push themselves. They want to, you know, would you rather come up short? It's one of my favorite things. Would you rather come up short on $10,000 or $1,000? Would you rather push for green and finish at 8000 a month at blue than pink? So if you, know that, if you know that you can hit pink or you know that that team can hit pink, you need to push them to blue. You need to encourage them and show them how to get to blue. One of the other things that I want to remind you guys too is a lot of girls that will start this business, they'll start building a team, and they feel like they can't reach down into their teams. And you can. That's your job as the sponsor. That's your job as helping even mentor that girl, to mentor that team. Because you're still trying to help them grow. Skills needed by a mentor. This is just going to be like a little refresher. Listen. Again, listen to everything that they want, everything they want out of this business. Listen to them when they're talking to you. Shut yourself in a room. Don't have background noise. Don't be talking to your kids. You know, set 20 minutes aside and really listen to what they want because they're going to know that if you're not completely fully engaged. Trust. Again, what is talked about stays between you and the girl that you're mentoring. Encourages. Tell them that you believe in them. Tell them that you love them. And that they can do this. Anybody can do this. Help them find that fire in their belly. We all have that fire in the belly. We're all going to go home from this weekend all pumped up, ready to run. Make sure that you're encouraging your teams daily. You're giving them that motivation. You're giving them the tools to succeed. Help them set goals. You have to know where you're sending your, you have to know where you're trying to lead them to. Inspire. Tell them stories. You know, it was so hard for me when I first started speaking to, to groups when I would go train in a different city to tell. I never have told my story, ever. I was too embarrassed by it because I always did things for other people. I never did what I wanted to do. I was always trying to make my mom and dad happy. I never, I tell your story because you're going to touch one person in that crowd. And if all you do is touch one person, you've done your job. Be people oriented. Love people. Be the fun person. People will be attracted to you when they can relate to you. Honest. Again, using that black status story as, as an example, I was very honest with her. As much as I wanted them to go black status, I knew that it might hurt that one leg's rep or business in the end. 
One thing I want you guys to take away from today is to know that you can do this. Take the tools, take the, take the tips that I've given you on how to work with your teams.